Hey everybody, how's it going? It is Matt and it is finally Fiendish Friday. Yes, 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 TGIF. Yes, um, I hope first and foremost, I hope each and every one of you are having a great morning, evening, dawn, day, or dusk. All that great stuff. And I hope that all of you do have a great weekend, a great safe weekend to get out there and do something fun. Uh, maybe hang out with some family or friends, loved ones. Do whatever it is that makes you happy because life is short enough as is. So you need to get out there and do some things and, and and, and have some fun because you know life sucks otherwise <laughs> otherwise otherwise we can't uh, uh, be here daily and, and do our, our our Monday through Friday reviews for you guys which I do love it when you guys like share and subscribe I see I'm up to 178 as of today uh, um, uh, what is the date today the it's Friday June 5th already holy smokes this year is just flying by considering everything that's been going on um but uh uh it's uh yeah it's nice having that many subscribers hopefully we can get it up to 200 by by the end of summer that'd be great fingers crossed fingers crossed um anyways but uh let's get back to today's film today is is a uh, uh the best film of the week by far or at least my favorite one of the week uh we just started off with white fire which was just tip top 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 notch and then we went into rolling thunder which is another great classic uh we had deadbeat at dawn uh and we had and we had satan's blade in there so it was it was a pretty solid week for as far as stuff going on some revenge some slashers uh uh so some kung fu uh some just awesomeness and now today we're gonna have ha add a little bit of the uh satanic uh uh the end of the world uh type of type stuff the gateways to hell type films and this one it came from 1981 and it is the second installment to the uh the uh hell gateway of hell or whatever that that uh trilogy that Fulci called it was this one uh house by the cemetery and uh city of the walking dead or city of the living dead or or gates of hell whatever you want to call it um it uh that one is the i believe the third one and house by the cemetery is the first out of the three but um Anyways, let's get on to this one. It's this cut is running at an hour and twenty nine minutes. This is the uh, the Grindhouse release of the Beyond, which um, I know this one has suffered a lot of cutting throughout the throughout the time. Uh, it's uh, it's it's a it's a damn disgrace that this one got cut because there's a lot of great stuff in here that added to the story that really um, didn't deserve cuts. You know, this is. Like, watching it uh, nowadays, it's so tame. And I understand that it went beyond the boundaries at times, with uh, especially with the little girl getting blasted in the face. Um, that scene just, I love to replay it, replay it, replay it, because it's just so insane. Uh, I, it's still, the effect looks good for nowadays standard, in my opinion. Uh, it doesn't look like, like, it could look better, don't get me wrong, but it looks pretty darn good, and it's fun, you know. There's a, 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 an amazing scene in here that involves spiders, which I, I love. But um, let's see, who all, who all do we have in here? We have Katarina McCall, which uh, she is amazing in this. Uh, and then we got David Warbeck in here as well, which I like him. Uh, we have Cinzia Mora. Mor Morial, uh, Antoine St. John, uh, Veronica Lazar, Giovanni uh, De Nava, who plays uh, Joe the Plumber, yes, 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 and Al Cliver, who plays a doctor in here, who's working on some uh, weird brainwaves type stuff on the dead, uh, see if see if he can come up with anything, and uh, uh, it's... Uh, it's interesting with his end of the the of, of the film like there's a few few scenes with him and uh one of them is really just uh i wouldn't say intense but it does kind of it's very um interesting it's a very good scene well it uh involves a corpse that they found that from this house from years and years and years before um 
of a of a warlock that was uh, at the very beginning. By the way, you get to get to see this a warlock get uh, thrown. I believe that's it's lie that they throw on him or quick lime, one of those two that they throw on him, and it it just oh it's gnarly. He starts melting away. They basically crucify him um, before they start throwing all this stuff on, and then they decide they're going to just uh, wall up the. The, the little room that he's in, like it doesn't exist anymore. They, they, uh, plaster, they not plaster it up, but they brick and mortar it up, you know. So, so he's tucked away forever and ever, never to be, uh, hopefully never ever to be found or seen or heard again. Now, this is the, like I said, this is, um, uh, uh, hour and 29 minute cut. This came from Grindhouse releasing. This, uh, this I believe is one of the first uncut releases of it here in the United States. Uh, I could be wrong, but, um, anybody, if you do know, let me know if I, if I'm, if I'm wrong or right on this one, because I am curious because it, it is a, uh, 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 one of those movies that I love and I've seen it a million times under the seven doors of death title which is the which is the cut version um and i for years i didn't know that there was an uncut version you know i i knew that that there was something wonky or weird with with the seven doors of death cut but i couldn't quite put my place my fingers on it because this is long before the internet uh i w i didn't have anybody here in in uh, iowa that i could uh, really rely on for for as far as um knowledge on the horror community i had to do all all learn all of it on my own not to toot my own horn i had to do, i had to do this all all by myself i didn't have anybody here to help assist me along the way uh now that i have the internet and it exists and i'm i am a uh, uh, entity out there on that uh, i am able to learn more which is nice i i cuz i felt like i was getting in a rut and stuck with only f only the films that I knew and new films were coming out that were so stagnant or, or repetitive and and this one this one was not stagnant or repetitive by any means but but um, what I'm getting at is I I got tired of watching the same films constantly um, there was even moments where I got bored with the Beyond. I went through a very bad phase of I hated every movie that I came across just because I was I was in a deep dark place in my life and I was not quite uh, um, the film fan at that moment. Even though I grew up as one, but I had just a brief moment in life where where I almost sold each and every one of my DVDs and Blu-rays out of my collection and called it good because I would I don't know I just had one of them just went through a phase I hope uh, I never go through that phase again because I hated that <laughs> I'm much have happier being a collector I'm not gonna lie um, but uh, uh, what do we got on this I, I haven't show I've been chabbering on and on and on about other things um, I haven't shown you this edition that, that it comes with. Um, it is zero reversible artwork, but it does have a very cool poster on the inside, which this is one I would like to um, actually get framed. I like that one a lot, and I'd like to put it up just because this is one that I enjoy so much. Um, as far as that artwork goes, there is... A Fulci filmography in here, so you get quite the quite the read throughout here, which is really nice. It's very extensive. It shows his entire filmography, which starts with uh, uh, nineteen. What does that say? Nineteen. Oh, that's his last last films there in his beginning films starting in ni the nineteen forties, which is crazy to think that the man directed that that many films and was you know the guy's an icon and his movies didn't become iconic for the horror community uh, or it, until later on for as far as um is uh, uh his horror stuff because he didn't he did like a lot of comedies uh crime thrillers uh, a couple of some westerns in there some jalos um you know he did a little bit of that this and that he he was uh quite the uh 
uh, um, Artur, you know, the guy had, he was no slouch behind the camera, let's just say. But his later his later stuff in his career when he is he is going completely into the horror genre is what I what most of us come to uh, to love and adore of Mr. Fulci and rest in peace, good sir. Uh, I am a full on Fulci file. I am a huge, 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 huge fan. Uh, if you put Argento and Fulci in front of me, I will pick Fulci ten times out of ten. Nothing against Argento. I love his films. The guy is a is a maestro himself. Uh, Suspiria is a perfect film, in my opinion. Uh, but I mean, it's it's his films are a different level, though, in my opinion, compared to Fulci. Their 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 films are are nothing alike in style. And I, I think that's what I like about Fulci. His style is not like anybody else's, you know. It's it's a little different um, than a lot of the other Italian directors that were coming up through the time, like uh, Lamberto Bava, Mario Bava, which was already established uh, car cr uh, career, Ruggiero Deodato, we had Umberto Lenzi. Uh, 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 who else did we have in there? That I'm, There's just a lot of great ones. Uh, Sergio Martino is one that I really, really, really like he's one that I feel is extremely underrated uh, he deserves a lot more love a lot a lot a lot more love you know the guy was a hell is a hell of a director I don't know if he's Sergio Martino's alive or dead anymore uh, I don't know if, uh, on that one I should probably look that up at some point but I didn't know that I would be bringing him up today <laughs> um, so let's do do a quick rundown of what the movie is about um, basically it's about a woman who who inherits this this old Louis this old uh, hotel in Louisiana uh, that has a rich history of of being uh, having a, a witch witchcraft going on at it. It had a warlock, like I said earlier, that was uh, brutally <laughs> brutally killed. Uh, but um, she inherits this this uh, hotel in hopes of um, of remodeling it and reopening it to the uh, public. Which is which is what I would do if I were to inherit a hotel like that, or I would flat out I would just sell it because I wouldn't know what to do in that kind of scenario. Although it'd be fun to run a hotel for a while, I don't know. It might be interesting, but um, things go quickly. Like you have, she has. Uh, uh, pe the people that are coming out to work on the house, they're they're dying one by one, uh, like a painter falls off of a scaffolding. Uh, uh, Joe the plumber, he dies. He gets a uh, uh, a thing through his face, and uh, there's uh, this girl right here. She's a blind girl. She has a really interesting scene that involves a German shepherd. Um, so and then David Warbeck he's he comes along and he he has a he's seeing these things happen too along with Katerina McCall's character. So he he is along with her on on fi on being hellbent on trying to find out what's up with this house, why are all these strange things happening, things of that ordeal. All right, guys, as far as, like, any kind of ratings I would do on this one. Oh, by the way, this is, they do find out that this is, this house is a gateway to hell. Just to let you know, that's why it's part of the Gates of Hell trilogy, um, which is, which is kind of cool to, to, to make a trilogy that connect, but they don't connect in ways, you know, like none of the same actors are in any of them that I can, that I recall. All right, guys, um. As far as the technical side goes, uh, Fulci was not a technical genius when it came to film. He was uh, a little above average, so I'm going to give him a four. Uh, he he did have a sh uh, an eye for some interesting shots. Uh, he knew how to build up tension and and suspense, and and he would he would do that really well. And he would have unintentional comedy. It seemed like in his his mo in his films, because there's always uh, every film of his. There's always been one or two spots where I've kind of like chuckled. Uh, uh, I don't know why. Um, 
one scene that I do chuckle at on here is the spider scene. I, I know I'm not supposed to at that one, but the spiders, they're using real spiders and fake spiders, and the and the fake spiders look so bad. So bad, dude. Um, so let's give this thing a four on that technical side, like I said, and this thing's a solid five on entertainment. I don't get bored with this one. It's my favorite out of the Fulci films. And I take that back. Zombie's my favorite. This would be my second favorite out of his films. And third be, would probably, ooh, that's a tough one. Maybe Don't Torture a Duck Lane or, or uh, House by the Cemetery. I love a lot. Um, but, uh, anyways, I'm going to get the hell out of here, guys. A 9 out of 10. I feel like it deserves that score. I got stuff to do. I hope all of you have a fantastic weekend. I'll see you all on Monday. Uh, and as always, peace.